Hello everybody, I'm just going to show you this uh, PRX518S subwoofer. That was my meter beeping, so don't go looking on your system. Yeah, so I've seen quite a few of these, but I've never seen this particular amplifier board. Uh, there are no schematics for it online that I can find, because it's using a different output stage. There's versions of these that have got transistors all the way along the bottom, pressing down onto the metal heatsink casing underneath, which is very white and getting things very dirty. Let's put it on this piece of paper. There you go. So there she is. Now, I've had a quick po poke around on this one because I've not seen it before. And I can tell you at this point that um, this FET on the end is shorted. The others don't seem to be shorted, but this one is shorted. So you've got your four output FETs. And they're all they're all same N channel FETs actually. It's not a complementary pair in such that one's a P channel, one's an N channel. On this version, they're all in, okay? So you've got a class D power amplifier basically with the filtering here and a relay, presumably to protect the speaker, I should think, um, probably on the output side. A um, couple of voltage regulators, but the main class D servo is on the input board, I think, on this. But um, I'm just going to take this out of here. It's all unscrewed already. So we can have a bit of a closer look. So I'll just bend those down gently. So they're IRFP250Ns, IRFP250N, IRFP250N. So yeah, they're all the same, same transistors. Which is somewhat unusual on a class D power amp. But there they are, of this power anyway, they're usually complementary pairs, but these are all N channel FETs. Now the one on the end is blown here, this one. This little fella is not happy at all. You can see that. Oh, this bloody white stuff's getting everywhere, isn't it? All over my hands. So the worst thing about working on amplifiers is the um heat uh, conducting paste with all the titanium dioxide in it. Um, yeah, so if we just whip that one over. I'm going to put my meter on diode continuity, so if there's a short, you will hear a beep. And you can see that this uh, this component on the end, this transistor, is shorted. Okay, so that's the gate, source and drain. It's all connected together. On these, there's no shorts. So... On this occasion, just out more out of curiosity than uh, PRX 518S. Have I got any of those? One moment, I'll go to the cabinet. Yep, so I've been to the cupboard of plenty, and uh, we have a tube of these things in stock, so which is good. Um, so I'm just going to uh, briefly check on the back of this. Normally, when these FETs go uh, short, if the power supply has got a lot of power in it and the others don't conduct, then some of the driving components, the basically the higher voltage can get back through the gate drive components here into the drive electronics, which is underneath this capacitor, which is stuck down. Now, a very quick check. I'm going to buzz through these components, but the ones you should really check are the uh, series resistor, which is this one, which is to make sure they haven't been blown open circuit or the value hasn't significantly changed. So that's reading 10.3, that's a 100, so that's a 10 ohm resistor. And then you can see normally there's a diode and a resistor in parallel down here. Down here. Can you see that? Hold on. Down here on the corner of the board, so here's a shorted FET. I looked at this already. This is the correct one, okay. Yeah, it's just short. And so we're looking at these components here. So the diode, if I go, you can't really test this diode because there's normally a resistor across it. Can't see what the value of that resistor is supposed to be. That's a 47 ohm resistor, and there's just a normal, usually a normal diode, sometimes a shock key directly in parallel with that too, so that when the drive voltage goes low, it pulls the uh, signal down more quickly than on the rising side to dump the charge in the gate, okay? 
So there's a 470 across a diode, and if I just meet, I can't really do a diode forward voltage drop with this because of the resistance. So when I meter it both ways, it's both ways is showing um, 51 ohms. So that's 51 ohms. But I'm guessing these diodes normally go short. This resistor is not blown, so I'm just assuming that diode and this this um, resistor here are okay at the moment. Now if we go back into the drive circuitry, you can see there's the line that drives this, comes from up here, over here, to uh, this multi-pin device, which is actually the output from the driver board, which is this vertically mounted board on the unit. Okay, So I'm just going to uh, take a punt on this one, and um, I would normally change everything, but low voltage FETs aren't usually as you know, destroyed um, by the others going short on the output circuitry. Sometimes they are, but I'm going to. What I'm going to do is change this transistor. Then we'll try the the uh, amp, and then we'll I'll load it up to say a couple of hundred watts on the system and uh, leave it running, and see if they are fixed or not. Um, if not, I'll go back into it and go into more detail. So let's just change that transistor. Turn the soldering iron on. Okay, stick a bit of leaded solder on these to make it easier to work down here. So I'm soldering on set to 400, that's good. Lift off this uh, strap on afterthought cap modification, presumably. Okay, so let's change this uh, this transistor. Just going to strap a little bit of copper wire across just to act as a heat buzz bar so that I can unsolder all three connections at the same time with a bit of luck. If it doesn't drop off, that is. It's just so it's easier than trying to clean out the holes because the plated through holes on these boards can be very delicate actually and these pull the lead out with not using very much force at all and you end up with the via pulling out the board as well or some sort of track damage so we're going to take it easy with this I think. Right, give it a moment just to heat up and uh, drop out. That's the way to do it. And then while she's still hot, suck out the hole. There you are, so we got that out with no damage, which is nice. It's nice when a plan comes together. Give it a quick clean. Uh, what the new fit in. They've insulated uh, the outside leg, so I'll just swap the insulation over. Very damp day today, so I don't need any anti-static precautions, really. And i uh, just slot the new one into the heel, into the position. There we are, which is lovely and straight. Finally, just uh, you can see where they've just tacked this leg on. If you were repairing a, an instrument from an aircraft or something like that, you'd be required to make a mechanical joint, i.e., wrap that copper uh, wire tightly around the peg before you solder it to make a mechanical and a solder joint rather than just relying on the solder. But I'm just going to do what they did at the factory. This is not an aeroplane, obviously. Right, so I'm just going to put this back together now, put it back on its chassis and put some more goo on it just to uh, make sure there's enough of this white goo everywhere and then we'll power it up and see if she works or not interesting to see whether a whether it works and b if it's going to be reliable by just changing the one failed transistor we'll see won't we okay well, it's all back together just going to try turning it on a couple of things you should watch out for on these which have caught me out a couple of times I mean, needless to say, you need to take a picture of this and work out which way around these connections go before you take it apart. And if another engineer's had it apart before you, check they're around the right way, because they just stuff them back together if they don't work and they can't fix them. 
Um, this plug here and that plug there, these two plugs are interchangeable, so always get the orange and brown one in the middle. It's my advice. And the final bit of advice is these caps, these big caps down here, the 40 volt rail caps, uh, low side uh, DC smoothing capacitors, they hold their charge for a long time. And if you connect one side of the output stage um, before the other, i.e. the both power supplies don't come up together, it causes it, it causes a bang and it can damage the components on here, okay? So always, even if this has been switched off, discharge these uh, low side smoothing capacitors and just short these three cables together before you plug them in. Because um, a couple of times it's caught me out and I've forgotten to discharge these and you get a big flash and uh, it blows up the amplifier board again. So don't um, connect this until you've discharged these ca caps here and those caps down there, okay? You can't connect one rail at a time, it doesn't work. Um, anything else to worry about? Obviously, if you um, put these back, make sure you get the washers right, that goes without saying. Um, I've got to glue this back down in a minute because this will flap about. The other parts I unstuck have been stuck back down. And then make sure all the screws are tight, obviously. So that's that. So anyway, on to the next one. Let's, let's, uh, let's try her out, shall we? Well, it's conclusive. Should you just change one if you only find one faulty transistor? The answer is, I put this back on and ran for something like uh, 3 or 4 minutes at 120 watts uh, until the resistor, the load got too hot, the load's just here. And uh, yeah, it went again, it blew and uh, so then I had to take it apart again and change both of them. So one of these ones I changed again and one of them's the original. So, yeah, if you change a pair of transistors, <laughs> always change both of them, because if one has failed, the other one isn't far behind if it's not shorted, okay? So I've done that, so you don't have to try it. So the advice is always, anyway, to change all the output devices, but this is a good indication. It's working. It's got a 60 hertz signal going into it. The local load's getting very hot. And she's all back together and working. Alright, so I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, then uh, just leave me a like. And um, also you can subscribe down there. There's a capacitor I'm testing here, out of the capacitor tester. Uh, just subscribe down there and I appreciate it. So yeah, good luck if you're repairing yours.